This is the process system program management uh, team meeting, our first one ever. Um, it's June 20th, 2022, uh, and this is one of two meetings. Well, we're split across uh, two meetings. And uh, who wants to go first? Why don't you start, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. I'm Peter Kaminsky. Uh, I'm in San Diego, California, and um, grew up in the U.S. I've traveled around the world a little bit, in different places. Um, and uh, I've been working with Lionsburg and OGM for probably a little over two years at this point. Um, and uh, one of my one of my specializations is in um, project management and product management, which is a little bit different than process and program management, but not much. Um, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm, um, I wouldn't normally say this, um, <laughs> and now it's hard to say it. Um, I wouldn't normally say this, but uh, I'm, I'm uh, pretty intelligent and, uh, and I'm also opinionated. Um, uh, and I don't mean for that to be a stop to conversation. Um, I'm super interested in when I'm wrong and uh, when when I'm not wrong, but maybe other people have different ideas. Um, I'm totally good with that. Um, I hope that comes off okay. I'm also Californian, which means I have, um, um, Californians are kind of passive aggressive and I'm not very aggressive, so I'm mostly passive, um, except when I'm excited about stuff and then I get, it's not aggressive. It's just uh, passionate. Um, uh, the thing I've been working on with Meta Project uh, is maybe kind of two things, a, a bunch of different things. Um, I work on the chat system. Um, I'm working on the, the library, the wiki system. Um, and especially I'm interested in about federating, uh, how, we, how we can all work together and scale really big. So Jordan and I talk about that a lot. Um, and then I've, my, my background is in IT, uh, software development and software development process, um, and tools for software development and tools for human collaboration. Um, especially, uh, the, I'm mostly interested in tools for helping people work together, um, when the people aren't software developers. So I do a fair amount of, you know, thinking about process, human process and then tool process and software development. But I really like it best when that's in service of, of people working together who, who don't care about the technology and don't, you know, don't want to. They did, just want to get stuff done. So that's me. Who's next? Or shall I pick? So I can go next. I am Helene Lindmark, and I'm located in Hanesand in Sweden, in the middle by the coast. I grow up above the Arctic Circle in the north, and I come from a Sami community. Uh, I grew up in a little village there. I am, um, today I, I am a spokesperson for the Sami people as an indigenous about tradition and knowledge, and also about, the pollution, the destruction of the earth was happening with the mining and different things. Um, but I am also a wisdom keeper, wisdom mother, carry wisdom from my family. I have a background in working with humans in, in, in healthcare in different. I, I have a degree in psychiatry. I like uh, process work in different education when it comes to human and earth dialogues and how can we build a bridge between and also what is behind the unspoken words that can be uh, in rooms. I feel very uh, little in this world because I'm not a tech girl at all. <laughs> Technology is kind of uh, very hard for me. I'm very impressed of all of you how you are so fast in this tech world. In a way, I want to understand it because I am dedicated to see what we can do for the earth and for saving humanity. 
And I think it's about saving humanity to come home to themselves, to find reason why do we need to work in another way? Why do we need to look over the world? And I'm a mother of four sons, everyone grown up, adult, and I have soon two grandchildren. And I have a very wise father, very silent. I come from a very silent people. We don't speak so much. And uh, I trained myself in communication. It was very important because I grew up in a family without communication. So for me, it's both the communication that goes on in the silent, but also the spoken communication. So that's me. Um, so <clears throat> I uh, work as a uh, facilitator. I design and facilitate groups of various different sizes to go through change management type processes. Um, I've been doing that work for um, more than about 15 years, I think, and I have I have my own company. I also do large scale visual mapping, um, which is kind of the shiny object that gets people's attention. And um, I have a undergrad in political science and a master's in fine art. So I'm a little bit of a mix between like political strategy and then like creative visionary kinds of things. Um, more recently, I've been doing a lot of uh, embodiment. I'm a, also a five rhythms movement teacher. So I like to bring um, movement whenever I can, you know, whenever I have a client that allows me to bring that kind of added um, element in. I've um, worked with social presence in theater folks with In Theory U. And um, a lot of my um, facilitation work comes out of the art of hosting community of practice. Um, and, um, oh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and, um, and I'm still trying to kind of figure out where is the best use of me, um, oops, sorry, um, in this, in this group. Um, I'm very much, uh, an initiator, um, and not so great at, um, like details, like way, way down <laughs> the chain of things. But I'm also really good at managing um, processes and systems and, um, and things like that. Hello, I was in another call. There was an overlap with two meetings. So that's why I'm a bit late. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I haven't seen Helen's face, I think. And Julie, I might have seen you, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I've seen you once in a meeting. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. We're, we're talking a little bit about ourselves and uh, especially in, in ways that it might relate to process and program management. Yeah, to start, what what is the scope of it? Maybe it's in the document, I'm not sure. So I could read up a bit before. Um, the, the, the scope of it for me, uh, maybe, maybe like a, a minute or two minutes. Um, I, I, I'm interested a little bit to know how how we'll work together, how we'll, you know, so I, I felt called to say that <laughs> I can be a little bit bossy because I think I'm right, but um, uh, I also want, don't want that to be a, well, often I am right, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't want that to be uh, something that, that pushes people away either. Mm. So hearing a little bit. How, how is that to be in that position? How is it to be in that position? Uh, it's a so Eric and I know each other reasonably well. Um, we've we've spent a fair amount of time together. So uh, it's um, it's uncomfortable for me because I I'm I don't like um, I I specifically in my personal life I don't like telling people what to do. Um, so it's it's always frustrating when I know that there's something that we should be doing together and and I feel like I have to be the one to say it and. You know the group didn't figure it out there's also um another thing about me that that is hard for me to work with but it's it is what it is i'm usually thinking like a multiple number of steps forward out out a couple years um and so a lot of the decisions that i i kind of just 
intuit. I, I, I intuit a lot of things. I don't, I don't, I'm not, well, I intuit a lot of things. So things about file formats or which tools to use or things like that. It's usually because I've been thinking about it for 20 or 30 years and because I've thought through a bunch of the steps forward going forward. And so I'll say something that in the moment, it's like, Pete, why would that be? That doesn't make sense. Or that seems like the, the not the best way to do it. And it's because in three or four steps, you know, in two years, it'll be important. So um, I don't always know that that's what's happening. A lot of times, you know, it, it seems like, well, of course, we would just do it this way. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, I, I have to understand that not everybody's there yet, or not everybody's thinking. Some people are thinking about, you know, the next month or two instead of three years from now. And so it's hard. I don't like it. it. It sounds a bit similar as being an artist and then you know what you're going to do, but it's, it's impossible to explain it and you can only do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and only then it's going to be right. If you start to explain it, it's already not working. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I, I'm patient patient and interested in hearing people go pete i don't understand why that makes sense and um i i like to try to figure out why it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't usually it does but mm -hmm. unlike math in call in university i went to a very tech a very high level technical school and most people there had a very logical understanding of math and i was completely intuitive so i would do homework with my my roommate and he would get the answer and I would get the answer and we both had the same answer except I had just kind of guessed it <laughs> and he could actually explain um, everything you know why you would get that answer and, and it always impressed me so I, I with technical solutions or especially things involving people you know it 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 only makes sense to explain it and unlike an artist or unlike me in math I I can explain things mm -hmm. um we could go deeper in this, but I, maybe it's good to uh, connect a bit to Helen and Julie. I, I, it's very meaningful what you shared to me, and it, it links to other things, but I, I really rather yeah, just open please. it. Yeah. Helen and, and Julie, um, maybe you shared already before I missed it, I'm not sure. Uh, um, so program and process uh, pro management? process and program management and which they both have fairly specific meanings to i jordan is kind of the one who used those words mostly but it's a it's a technical thing in, in at least in the us they mean fairly specific things what is program management then because program management for me sounds like a, a workshop program that's the, how i know the word but then otherwise yeah let me um uh let me type, I should be doing this in a Google Doc and it hurts me not to be doing that, but um, so there's process management and program management and uh, product management. I thought you already created a Google Doc. Well, uh. yes, <laughs> I think um, I think the agenda doc is complex enough that it should stand, it, it needs to serve two meetings. So I think I don't want to take notes on it. So I wanted to create another doc which we could take a little bit of time to, but, but anyway, I, I can do that in the background as we unfold. So, um, so it's funny that all these words, um, start with P's. Um, and these are all fairly specific terms that mean like, you know, narrow, narrow, a fairly narrow thing to people in the US and, and at least the people I've worked with in the UK and maybe some folks in Europe and things like that, but it won't necessarily mean the same thing everywhere. So um, program management is usually, or let me start with project management. So project management for me means we have a, usually a time bound thing. Um, you know, we have have to do something in a week or a month or, or three months, or hopefully, God forbid, 18 months. Um, and we break it down into chunks and inter interim milestones and tasks and assign the tasks and make sure that we're doing a good job of keeping track of what needs to be done, what comes up as we're doing it, and, and we get a project done. 
So then product management is really cool. It, this didn't exist when I was first in the business, but it's a, it's a new thing in the past 20 years. Product management is understanding the needs of a set of users and, um, and then some of the technical stuff, um, especially along with engineers who are going to do the work, um, and then making those two things fit together. So it's having a roadmap for the, the product and serving all the constituencies, the, the customers and the engineers and the management and the you know, sales team and everything. So yeah. um, that's one of the things I like best doing. Um, and it's, sometimes it's done well. There, it's, it's become a real science in Silicon Valley. Um, and some of that is very positive and some of it is anti-positive, um, like the way Google does product management is by literally by numbers. They don't care about anything else. It's all numbers, which is not, not best. So program management is usually in a large company. Um, a program is a whole suite of projects and products and processes and departments and things like that. It's making sure that um, the different programs that the, the whole enterprise is working on, it could be 30,000 people, um, are, although program management is under the level kind of the 30,000 people, but it could be, you know, 5,000 or 10,000 people working on, you know, 100 projects or a couple hundred projects and multiply overlapping and things like that. How do we make sure all of those things are coordinated in such a way that you know um, the people doing the, the project management know what they're doing and can coordinate with everybody um, and get things delivered over time and in, in a fairly smooth smooth way mm -hmm. process management is i it's it's a little bit of a plumbing job um it's so for all those other other things going on and probably other things too um hr and sales and marketing and finance and all that kind of stuff uh, everybody needs processes to work um, and some people are very good at mapping processes documenting processes um, uh, optimizing processes um, uh, teaching people uh, how process works um, sometimes that kind of it, it's generally mostly human process or human plus it process um, uh, there's another branch of stuff which manages there's a whole bunch of process science for, for IT stuff, but that's not what that means. Um, uh, does that make sense? And and maybe Julie especially, does does anything I said sound wrong or? Yeah, no, that, that all sounds, yeah. And, and I think one of the things that I'm, I'm sure you noticed, Pete, is that especially in technology, there's such a focus on um, the technology part of the process change and the yeah. human part <laughs> is, yeah. is sort of ignored and, and change management is ever only as successful as you can get human cultures to change. So a lot of times I work, um, I've been doing a whole lot of work on supply chain stuff in the last couple of years and, um, really looking at like the hardest hurdle to 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 switch is like is the human element is to get people used to a whole different way of of going about you know everything that they they learned in fact i've been working with a team that is really trying to get people to unlearn everything that they've known about supply chain for the last 30 years so that process piece is like key <laughs> to yeah. anything to shifting anything i i want to add something to, to this whole discussion because it's it speaks to all of it, I guess, is um, kind of the irony of um, the people speaking about overwhelm and how to get past it and about um, uh, how about culture as well. And then they also getting overwhelmed and burned out and disconnected with what they're doing. Um, just one of the most striking examples is the amount of burnout I've seen in the network of nonviolent communication, for instance, which is a network that really says literally, first take care of yourself, then take care of the others. But then in in its processes, uh, also with change management and stuff like that, it, it, it just became so painful and, and draining and people really went through a lot of 
painful processes. I, and I, I see it almost everywhere. Uh, nonprofits, artists, um, government, uh, even there are sometimes they're so well paid that they're quite happy, but <laughs> that's a joke, but uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a pervasive issue, I would say, uh, process and how to deal with it. And it's not a simple one um, because talking about it can get you tired even. Um, <laughs> it's a joke again, but um, so I'm wondering um, what are the main questions we're trying to answer here in this group? We have, um, let me answer that real quick and then I want to, I want to come back to the topic of process management and especially how maybe it, it fits with meta project um uh so so one process thing uh the the collected group of us is pretty good at using uh the, the reactions here so i raised my hand and then that builds a queue and um and then we can kind of i so i i will use that to say I want to say something, but I don't want to interrupt the flow of the current conversation. And we can kind of use it that way, I think. Um, I think I almost lost your question, Eric. <laughs> uh, what, what are they have like three things that we want to answer? Yeah. Uh, that's a, a great question. And um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, share, my, um, share my browser. I think you can see my browser with PPMT meaning number one, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we have a, a pretty good, or I don't know, we have a very long, maybe a, there are also a different group number one, just for clarity. Excuse me? Which, which group are we? Because if this is continuing this way, we need a clear name for the group. That's, so a, that's a very good, um, Um, I'm going to make a section on this. So this document, the link to this document is also in chat now. Um, I'm going to call that open loops and, um, I, I think what's going to happen and I've got an example of this, um, I'm going to make another thing called organizations. So there's meta the meta project maybe slash Lionsburg. Um there's open global mind. Um I want to talk about something else real quick called Dawn of Everything Book Club Book Circle. Um, Dawn of Everything Book Circle is uh, the, the same set of people who are kind of in OGM and Meta Project and, and Mattermost. Um, and uh, there's about 20 of us, I think, 15 or 20 of us, and we have dual meetings. Uh, so every about every two weeks, we have two meetings in that week, and it's supposed to be, it's about the same chapter. So observationally what happens is that the 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 participation changes kind of from week to week some people sometimes people can't make it on the day that they they can't make it either day sometimes they'll go well i can't make it this day but i'll join the other group that i usually don't go to and so we've had some mixing i so i kind of wonder i i don't know that I, I think we should think of it as one group that has a couple meetings and we kind of rotate around who's who's in which meeting, maybe. It's easy um, if, if somebody is in both, but that's maybe not. Well, easy. I this this week I'll try to be in both or I'm, I'm expecting to be in both. The, the other question is, um, uh, uh, do we think this, um, do we think, uh, two separate Zoom meetings works. Um, I I'm not sure. I I'm 
I don't feel like this is the best way to do it um, for a team like this. I think I'd rather get everybody together less frequently and then do more asynchronously in chat and and meeting notes and stuff or or maybe semi-synchronous check-ins on chat or something um the the time zone thing in particular it's it's awesome that we've got kind of a spread of time zones um and and we'll be picking right now we've got us and europe we're going to be picking up uh australia too and so it gets hard to, to meet everybody at the same time or not not it gets it, the the windows get very small i guess um so i've been doing some of that work with um with some of the folks too it's it's been interesting kind of trying to map the time zones and how to how to get meetings done um so you were you had a question which was um, what questions are we trying to answer and I think we've got a great set of them here and I think we should go through that. Um, I've got some high point ones that are like top of mind for me. Um, uh, I I also. We were talking about process, our, our name, um, process and program management. It's kind of an artifact that we ended up with that phrase. Um, it's an artifact of of Jordan um, and his experience in construction and building big things and stuff like that, um, and also being exposed to you know the 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 list of all of these um, in business in general. So, um, so I feel like a we, I feel like a lot of what Lionsburg and Meta Project needs to start with is actually project management, which isn't even in the name, right? But um, for instance, for getting this meeting set up and then running this meeting and then you know having output from this meeting coalesced, that to me is is a a small project in it in and of itself, right? And Marianne and I did a pretty good job of tag teaming that. She did a lot of work separately, and then I did a lot of work separately that kind of interlocked with that. Um, but I guess, so I guess this team, I would expect to be decent at project management out of the gate, and maybe we kind of are already. Um, most of the most of the other groups um, have, and speaking of, you know, OGM and some of the other, the other organizations um, and uh, Meta Project. It's really hard for people to even know what what a project is, how to manage it, how to track it, how to you know learn during the project, how to report out to other projects, how to coordinate, um, what you know what roles even mean, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of catch up I think that we need to do. Just like I would feel really good if you know, I don't care too much what the name is, but if process and program management was just helping people do decent project management for a couple months, that would be like, you know, that would be like huge, massive. Um, so, yeah. so it's kind of weird that we have process and program management and not project management, but I, I you know, we'll figure it out. Thanks, Julie. Um... Yeah, Pete, what you were just saying sort of makes me start thinking like that we need a, a training, a, an orientation, a template, you know, just all of those things to teach people who don't know how to do this so that they have yeah. some tools to work with. Yep. I I've never built, I've never had to build any of that stuff for teaching project, project management, but um, I've had to build other things like it. That, that would be, <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I'm not sure that that's. I mean, and um, it's also something, I mean, it's also something that can be created as the first project moves forward too, where yep. things get documented. Yep. Right along with that, I, I, um, you know, 
part of me wants to say, oh my God, that's the the most important thing that we could be working on. And, and in some ways it is. Um, I think there's actually other, even more important things. And we've we've had teams working on them for a while. Um, so another one is, uh, another team is Meta Project Social Dimensions. Um, which was working on, Eric, are you part of Social Dimensions or not? I, I, I hope I am, but I don't, I'm not sure if I, I don't, I don't think you have been. No, but um, I, I should be, yeah. You should be, yeah. Um, starting in February, before the, the real kickoff of Meta Project, um, there was kind of a, a haphazard group, maybe that's the wrong way to say it. There was a, a kind of arbitrary group of people who Jordan pinged and, and the ones who were able to get together and, you know, it just, just happened that we ended up um, forming something that ended up being called the social dimensions group. It, it meant to, it was meant to be one meeting and then it was two meetings and then it was six meetings and it was seven meetings. And then it was after, after discussions, after those meetings. And that led up to kicking off um, the meta project stuff. And the conversations we had in the social dimensions crew really helped Jordan get the, the social part of the calls and the social part of the organization going um, uh, in in a better way than probably it would have. Uh, that does that. I not to say that it's been great. Um, it's been okay. Um, but there are a number of people who, kind of the social, the old social dimensions crew, and then newer people too. We've been working. They've been working. I'm, I'm part of that. Um, uh, on it's almost the equivalent of project management. You know, how do we get together as a group? How do we stay energized? How do we not step on each other? Um, how do we make sure that we have enough diversity of participation, um, and diversity of, you know, thinking? Um, uh, so I, you know, that's, I, I overlap into that certainly, but then there's a bunch of people, including Eric um, and probably, um, probably both Helen and, and Julie, uh, who are maybe better at that than I am. I, I follow along really well in that. I, I'm not so much of a leader in that. Um, so, so part of me does want to say, oh, project management, that would be awesome. And we're also doing a similar thing, kind of, and we need to do better at just, you know, social, social process. Um, Uh, Julie, including training basically so the thing part of the thing that made me think of it julie was you saying training you know because it's not enough to tell people you know oh learn about project management you actually have to like it's training and and onboarding and things like that sorry eric yeah um i'm also in this meeting um i'd like everyone to speak up whenever they feel so instead you, of this hand thing both you know no no it's, it's just you both feel comfortable, Helen and Julie, to speak up when you feel oh, I actually would like to speak up. <laughs> it's a funny thing, but so, so, so Pete, Pete initiated the hand raising before you jumped on, so we were programmed to do that. <laughs> I think it wasn't actually. Well, um, whew, so many others. Okay, Helen, you go first. Um, you know, when I met uh, Jordan, I think it was with the One Degree Network, where I saw him first, or if it was with Lisa Ma. Um, I always follow my intuition. Sometimes I don't know why I'm why I'm in in certain groups or what the heck I'm doing there because I'm feeling very lost, and. And that is how I can sometimes feel in this group that I feel very stupid uh, because I'm living my call and and walking <clears throat> walking more with the earth dialogue and a human dialogue, of, of course, also with the human dialogue. But I think what you also said, Pete, about the social dimension, it's it's kind of a creating the trust and the abilities to see also to see developed in the process in in the project we are creating. Uh, and this is also how it is. I, 
I just get, you know, this and this group you should be in. And I really don't know. And this group, I feel like I was thinking before the meeting, I think, my God, Helen, what are you going to do there? What is your role there? <laughs> really, Helen. And, and I mean, I had some private calls with Jordan and he, we discussed who I am and what I do. But I think that is, um, that is the hard part for me that I totally living by my intuition and, and what's coming to me. And sometimes I really don't know why I'm in groups. So it's not that I don't want to participate. It's just, um, it's just integrating in me and uh, yeah, it's processing in me. And I hope I can be in develop with something with you really. Okay. Thanks. Um. So I heard you say, okay, it's about product management. If we have this, then that's already great. Um, uh, process management, whew, there's like different uh, kinds of process management, I guess. Uh, one is a typical uh, com company one, and then there's the HR process management, but then there's also the the whole way there's so much how to call this like if, if i'm in fintorn for instance that's an example in fintorn it's a an eco village for and there's a lot of spiritual people there that's already a lot it's it's a, everybody's got their own view on spirituality everybody's got their own convictions their own way of looking at it i remember in fintorn there somebody told me that the, at a certain moment, the founders, they, they fell away. And then it was kind of a battle of who has the strongest intuition <laughs> like, or the, the biggest divine inspiration or something. And then it's like, and I've also been in groups where there's like people who have these kind of um, spiritual insights and they, they compete on the spiritual level. And that becomes really tricky. Like, how, how do you even talk about those things? Because they come through other ways. They come through dreams. They come through imagination. And everybody's got their very personal relationship to it. So that's, that's, that's a lot of layers. But then we actually have a way more diverse group even. There's so many different backgrounds that people can come from. Um, I also don't really... I'm not fond of religion. I am open for the idea of God. Uh, and But I, everything that sticks to God for me is really difficult. So that's also part like of process, more like social process. So I think it's more social dimensions. Um, but still there's something about it um, because we have spent a lot of time in these meetings talking about those kind of things. And I had a lot of issue with just being able to be there because the the information that comes at me is too much for me to be able to sit with it and to be comfortable listening to it and i but it also doesn't feel right to just be pragmatic um, so there's something also about balancing the two and what is the right place for which and when and that's also i think part kind of of this group um, but only part. Um, then when it comes to project management, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Um, uh, Lalou, uh, Frédéric Lalou, he wrote his book about the new work. That's like one way of approaching it. Um, and there's all these kind of methods uh, that exist, like sociocracy and nonviolent communication and um, holacracy is close to sociocracy. Then there's there's a myriad of things that you could use and i think it's good to use something which is as simple as possible and you also uses an as simple as possible language um, to give an example for me it took a while to get my mind wrapped around the idea of sovereigns even if it might be a very deep and profound and useful idea it's 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 difficult it, it creates it creates like a a stepping stone you have to get over and we really need for people who have very low level of project management uh, experience 
that it needs to go very slow and gradual and, and the information we give them relates to what they already know. It's simple language, simple, clear language. Um, so I think that's two requirements, is simple and clear language um, and, 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 and gradual steps for people to follow or, or something relatable to their everyday life. Uh, that being said, um, I guess Peter has, Peter has some ideas on how to do this. And I'm also curious about you, Julie and Helen, and how, which ideas you have. Uh, maybe Julie go first. That's my preference somehow. <laughs> it's my intuition. <laughs> Um, like I'm, I'm not at all clear about the, um, the social dimensions group and what they're working on and, um, how that's different from, from us. Um, because to me, any, anytime you do some kind of project or process, you have to take into consideration the human dimensions of that. So I would, if. I would love to hear a little bit more about what social dimensions is about because I really have no concept of what's happening there. Mm -hmm. Pete, uh, um, should I should I talk about that a little bit or? It would be helpful for me, yeah. And um, like, and what's the vision for this? The you know the group going forward with social dimensions work. Yeah. Um, let me go back to, uh, so by the way, um, uh, let me, let me make a, let me pause that and make a meta comment or a, a, one of the things I'm doing here is sharing my screen and the document while I'm typing and while other people are typing. Um, uh, I have a deep understanding and awareness that that is disruptive to seeing people's faces. Um, and some people manage that just fine and some people um, don't manage it just fine. Um, the, 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 reason, the reason I do that is because it helps everybody kind of focus on what's going on and see a little bit of the edges of the conversation as it gets taken down into notes. Um, it's a little bit like using the chat, the chat system, except it's more persistent kind of over time and, and we can, you know, write something in the, in the document and come back to it. Um, uh, if that ever gets in somebody's way, um, please just say, hey, can we stop screen sharing for a little bit? I just want to see people's faces. The the other trick, if uh, another trick, uh, in your Zoom window, you should be seeing the screen sharing and then people on the right. Um, you can actually grab the the line in between those things and, and slide it left and right to make the different sides bigger and smaller. Um, there's also a couple different ways you, you might see people on top and then you won't have the, the line to drag across. Um, so if, if we ever need help, you know, making the screen share smaller and people's faces a little bit bigger so you can see reactions and stuff like that, let's do that. So I'm a bit bossy about sharing um, the doc, doc screen and I don't like doing that at all, <laughs> but I think it's it helps the group to do it. Um, and um, I've been watching us in, again, in Dawn of Everything. Um, if we have a small number of people in the room, like this is a decent number of people in the room, you can get still get decent, you know, decent size of everything. And, um, and there are few enough people that you can interrupt each other and, and say, let's stop screen sharing for a while or whatever. Um, when you get more people, when you have eight or 10 people or 20 people, um you have to kind of pick one or the other and um so so um to pop the stack to use a, a technical term um, um programmers use a thing called a stack uh to keep stuff and it's like literally like a stack of dishes at a at a cafeteria you take the top one off or you put some on so i just took off the conversation about sharing screen and let's talk about how, how social dimensions 
you know, what's that, what's that and how's it different from PPM? Um, to do that, I'd like to go look at the groups that we talked about on the last navigation call. So we have constitution, resourcing, process and program management, wiki posse, start page keepers, map weavers, social dimensions, interviewers, skills and passions, spreadsheet, story sovereign, and <laughs> call artifacts publishing with only me in it. Um, so already we have a, a plethora of of people and groups in different places. And some people are in multiple groups, which is fine. Um, so I think we could kind of explore, you know, how is, how is PPM different from some of these other things like constitution group or wiki posse or map weavers or things like that. Um, uh, you didn't miss much, Helen. Um, so let me let me talk through each of these real quick as I understand them, and then then we if we need to drill into social dimensions we can do that. So constitution group is fairly is new. The idea is um, it would be nice to have a a statement of purpose and and how we gather together and things like that. So in kind of the way I think Marianne wrote something like. Um, this this is essentially the PP, you know, a, a draft PPM, um, uh, and, and I don't think it's right, but it's a draft PPM outline for the the constitution for PPM, right? Separate from Meta Project. So, you know, who are these people? What do they do? Um, let me show you another one, maybe which is a little bit more more better. Uh, so I'm going to keep coming back to Don of Everything Book Book Circle. Um, I've been running it, and I've been running it as a micro. It, Along with the content, it's very interesting and fascinating. I've been running it as kind of a prototyping um, platform for some of the things that we want might want to do in Meta Project. So um, the a, a very early thing that we did with this um, was draft essentially a constitution, which is you know how we work together. Our organizational forum is a club; anyone may join. Everyone's expected to conduct themselves you know well. Here's how we talk. Um, here's what we do. We work in the open. You know, yeah, here's a license that we use when we're working in the open. Uh, we use Google Docs to create organizational articles like this one. And organizational articles are, you know, something the, the, the intent of that was you would end up with not just one document that's a constitution, but probably a, a library of constitutional articles of confederation is another way of thinking of them. And you know, we talked through um, what you know what makes sense, what we believe in, what we don't believe in. So this is essentially a constitution. And so coming back to this, constitution group has charge to um, to create something similar uh, for a meta project. Um, now it makes me think that I have to show them this because it's a good one or it's a good start. So resourcing group, um, resourcing is a funny, funny, funny name for me. Uh, but what it means is um, we've we've started to learn that there are going to be things that we need to pay for, um, uh, sometimes including our our time um, or our time working for a group like this. So the resourcing group is going to go find money um resources uh probably other stuff too like people and connections with organizations and things like that um process and program management is us uh wiki posse is mostly me and jordan although we're we've got a few more people joining uh the lionsburg wiki is meant to be a document library basically um uh, so one of the documents that would be posted there is uh the constitution um, we would also post in the document library things that the process and program management group, you know, white papers or training materials or whatever, that would all go in the library. Uh, Eric and I started working on something called the start page. Uh, one of the one of the gaps that we have is people come to Meta Project and they say, okay, how can I connect? How can I help? What's here? Who's doing what? 
How can I find the tools that I need? All of those questions are not written down anywhere right now. Um, and they're all like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just got here myself, you know, is, is the answer basically, or, you know, ask, ask Pete or ask on this Mattermost channel, what's a Mattermost channel? How do I use a Mattermost channel? Why would I, you know, why would I, you know? So the idea uh, was to have a, a web page that you could go to, you could point people to one solid web page with a short URL and say, this will help you find all the things you need, you know? Um, here's the tools you need. Here's some initial starting processes. Here's you know more tools. Here's more processes. Here's some people to connect with. Here's some groups to connect with. All of that could be on one page and get people going, right? So again, process and program management could help start page keepers, um, get, get that going, um, project manage it as a project, uh, put stuff there, um, uh, help process and program management could help other groups. So the start page keepers may, may not know all the things that need to be on the start page. So process and program management might be a group of people that could go out and, and you know, help start page keepers and the other groups coordinate the process of creating the start page. Um, I apologize a little bit for going in detail here, but <laughs> I think it's all reasonably important. Um, so map weavers is a really interesting thing, and it's stronger. Um, it's it's stronger and more influential than than maybe influential is the, the wrong word, but it's it's got an earlier start and a faster. It's fa going faster than some of the other teams, and so it's doing a few things. It's doing some great work. It's also taking responsibility or, or ending up with responsibility for things that maybe other people should be doing, um, like start page keepers or pro process and program management, or I don't know. The idea of map weavers is um, uh, it would be nice to know who's in the room, uh, who's, who's in the, our large rooms, who's in each room, what they're doing, who they are as people, how they're connected to other parts of, of you know, the world. Um, what we all need to be working on, what what projects there are, um, and maybe even a group a group might have a number of projects. How can we track all of those projects? How and how can each project track itself? So the the process of finding all that information and and keeping track of it in an organized way is called mapping for many people. Um, uh, so this does not mean any kind of geographical map, although you can actually do some of that, you know, where are people located in the world? Um, it's mostly who's doing what, where, um, what are the resources, what are other groups outside of us that we could draw on, all that kind of stuff. All of that stuff ends up in a database, and then you can make uh, reports out of it. You can print, print reports, or you could um, make visualizations with lines between things or whatever. That's what this group does. And because, because they, they're really good at doing that, uh, um, Vincent and Wendy McLean are both, have been super strong at pushing this project. Um, uh, they run into problems like, you know, we need, we need to define, you know, what, what groups there are, um, you know, uh, we need to, I don't know, they, they run into weird questions of, you know, I want to help people understand information, but we need more information to help understand that. So they're, they've been in, they've been having to do things that are outside of mapping a little bit just to, just to be able to map. So social dimensions, like I said, it got started early. Um, and this list is the people who want to be in social dimensions going forward. It's different from the people who are happened to end up in in that in a little side group called social dimensions starting in february before before jordan did the kickoff months before jordan did the kickoff um the idea of social dimensions is there's a uh, group process uh psychological concerns uh diversity um uh human gardening, earth gardening. Uh, there's a bunch of things that aren't 
aren't mapping data, um, aren't having a library of, of pages and information and things like that, um, aren't um, process and program management is the intent of it. I think if I, if I understand Jordan correctly is that um, there's kind of a, a science and a tool set for people doing process and program management and project management and things like that. And uh, this group would do a great job of, of helping define that. Um, so that certainly includes human process too. You know, how do we do retrospectives? Um, how do we do um, planning together? How do we make sure everybody's heard during, during a call? Um, but it's different from what are the social dimensions of the meta project and how do we make sure that enough people are, you know, how, how do we take care of the, the human side and not just individual human side, but, but teams of humans and groups of humans and interlocking sets of values and um, uh, principles and things like that, especially when they start to be very different from each other. Um, different groups of people will come with different assumptions about how we should work together and what values and principles that we should all have or that maybe maybe some people will think, most hopefully most of us will think, well, different people will have different sets of values and principles and hopefully we can figure out how to harmonize those things rather than, than end up in some kind of divisive war. Um, so social dimensions is, it, it would typically be called soft skills. It's also something that you don't find um, in, in an enterprise situation in a big company. This is very diminished um, in, in relationship to the rest of the organization. You would get a little bit of this in HR. Um, and then in HR, it would actually be managing situations so that the company has control and and minimizes the amount of feeling that people do and the amount of caring that people do. Um, so Meta Project is is almost inside out from that. We care a lot about how we're going to work together and doing doing things well and doing things with as many people as we can in a way that everybody values and and is is important too and things like that. So th in a way, you know process and program management um, is kind of informed by that and we're going to be more humane and more caring than most enterprises are as we do process and program management but this is still kind of the the art and science of um, managing in a in a fairly technical way um, getting things done and I don't mean technical like tools I, I mean it, it's almost a, a scientific way, right? Um, we have a lot of science around how you do program management or project management. Um, and it's, you know, there's there's a, a bunch of stuff that, that experts just know um, and can advise the rest of us how to do well. Um, so at least a couple of us here are experts, I think, in, in some part of that. Um, so did that answer your question, Julia, kind of? I could keep going. There'd, these are yeah and you know as you're talking about this i so i can't see the group the group makeups that are in social dimensions and this group at the same time but it seems to me like it would be useful it's for the yeah to be a little overlap i think eric you're in both of those groups too are you the only one that's in both of those groups because i'm thinking about jumping into the social dimensions yeah please do because I as think well so that we can carry yeah. some of that into this group yeah i think it's uh, necessary yeah um we've also got jason in both places mm. okay well how do you feel about joining that group um, good. I think it fits my skill sets pretty well, too. Yeah, it sounds like that. Yeah. We're uh, going to have to relaunch social dimensions um, because there's kind yeah. of an existing group. And then, yeah. you know, mm. we need to we need to relaunch it, basically. Okay. Yeah. Can you add me into that? Yeah. Pete, um, I'm going to add you to this document, which is yeah. the notes from last week. I don't know that that means you're oh. going to be added everywhere. 
Okay. No, I so, have. Uh, yeah, I have that document. I have access to that document, so I can add myself into social dimension. Well, I've I've just added you. Oh, okay. uh, what I mean by that is <laughs> this document that these lists have already yeah. been um, exported. Mapped. Yeah. Um, okay. And gotcha. so, is there anybody I should let know, or? <laughs> right. I, I, have like a, here. <laughs> I have like a two-step call or a two-step answer to that or two three-step answer <laughs> the the map it, it's part of map readers um and it's it's kind of like process and program management should be able to tell you the answer to that but all of this is so new that i know yeah, yeah i wanted to make the joke i'm with the program now after you explain all of it uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, it's kind of helpful, like everything you said, I kind of know, but it's kind of helpful also to, to understand better what we have to be able to yeah. understand what we need and what we need to do. Um, it's still tricky because the process management, um, maybe it's the jargon uh in the typical project management is heavy with heavy terms <laughs> I don't know. uh it's so i i don't know how to approach how to even start but um i'm wondering what's the easiest way to do this um this may be the good question like um what are we seeing right now and what do we need is one question i guess um uh, people are figuring uh, it out as we go along kind of thing right now, but in every group, there must be a few people that know about project management. They probably will take the lead in creating these documents and talking about it. So that might not be the biggest issue. So what are, what are the issues really? Let me, um, uh, it, it's funny, uh, Jordan just posted to the process and program management um channel Wait, let me uh what is having a shared calendar by the way otherwise i wouldn't have had what's this. that i i came out of the funding the resourcing uh meeting yeah 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 the overlap in the meetings and i think uh having a shared calendar is one of our responsibilities um it's a great one uh That was just a place to put my thoughts, that last point I wrote, yeah. So uh, Meta Project needs an open loop tracker and one actually got started in the map map weavers group and it's not the right place for it, kind of. It kind of is, but it's kind of not. We take that on for the moment until somebody, some other, it, so maybe explain what an open loop tracker is and then it may be both of you, I guess for Helen, I, I, I'm not sure if you know about the term open loops and open loop tracking and okay so if, if you got like a software company and you've got all these kind of users and they run into problems then you want to talk to them and um, people post problems and then people start responding to it and that's kind of an open loop tracker is there is an open loop an issue and people start talking about the issue and then until the issue is resolved ideally and then and then it goes into the archive because the issue is resolved. Um, that's how what we would need, I guess, for this uh, for for our, for us as well. I, I would uh, so the 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 idea of a, a loop is you kind of it's a it's a small cycle. Um, so you have a question or a problem, um, and that creates a a loop. And hopefully in the loop, you start to get, uh, you know, more questions of, of ex, uh, ex, uh, exploring it, analyzing it, and you start to understand the problem and then you can fix it and resolve it. And that closes the loop. So an open loop is when you say, well, we need, you know, we need a shared calendar. And the next step is somebody makes a shared calendar and closes the loop, but it's open while, and so, it happens a lot and even a conversation you know you you start a, a topic and you don't finish a topic um or a, a group starts worrying about something or thinking of something and thinking of the need like a shared calendar 
and if you don't write it down and track it, um, it you lose it or you keep coming over it. You keep stumbling over it again and again in meetings. So if you can put them all in a tracker, uh, a system that that keeps track of them, it gives them a number and you know uh, some notes and things like that. Um, then you can manage manage the open loops and close them ideally. Um, I want to note that we're 10 minutes over time. I think I'd, I'd like to go 20 more minutes and then stop. Um, yeah. uh, Eric, that was okay with the rest of us. I hope it's okay with Let's you. Do um, a lot more. Yeah. Um, the, I, I would propose that a thing to do is to go over this agenda real quick. Um, and I've thought about this agenda a lot, so maybe I could do that. Um, uh, how does that sound? Um, we could spend the next 20 minutes doing whatever um but it's good yeah i guess so go over point uh, point, I mean. so so i'm gonna go kind of i'm gonna go over the whole try to go over the whole thing pretty quick um and even going over this agenda could take more than 20 minutes so um pete can uh, i so cool. just can I make a yeah. suggestion that we all just sort of scan through the document instead of going through it bit by bit? Mm -hmm. I mean, was this agenda intended for this one meeting or going forward? Um, it's a good question. Marianne wrote, you know, Marianne started writing uh, and yeah. this is all the stuff that she got. Um, and then I, I added some more things. Okay. Um, because so if in the five rhythms, <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is my dance movement practice. The first rhythm is flowing and it's yep. a very, very gentle rhythm. And it's a way of grounding your beingness. And I, and I feel like this group may need to go through a little bit of the rhythm of flowing before we get to the next yep. rhythm, which is staccato, which is when you get really clear and decisive and you start moving into making decisions and things like that. Yep. Um, and it's just, you know, sort of the way that group processes tend to go where you got to like float around a little bit before you can land into being able to make clear decisions. Yep. Um, I'm reminded of uh, Tuckman's uh, stages of group. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. I also so like a... um, the the methodology I use is the Drexler Sibit um, team forming model, which is a really beautiful beautiful one too. Uh, Sibit. Yep, David Sibit. S i b u e t. Yeah, you got it. Uh, what's the rest of this? Um, Drexler Sibit team model. I believe. I mean, out of this whole document, what do you think would be the most useful thing for us to focus on in this last? 15 minutes of the call. Um, the there's there's kind of like preceding questions, I think. Yeah. Um, one of yeah. them is this one, uh, which is a question that that I added, and it's it's actually a, a fairly folded up kind of question. Um, uh, I think, I think, well, I don't know. One of the, one of the ways that uh, we could see this team is uh, being a subgroup of the meta project. Could, could a different way to see it. Could What's that? you in the document, please? So then, because I wasn't in, in my own version of it. And... Can, uh, can I do what? Can you just put it full screen? Sorry, the document. Push the green button on the left upper corner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and can I, like, one thing I'm observing in this document is that it's getting pretty quickly into the tactics and the strategy of this group. And I really mm -hmm. feel like we need to answer the question of why. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what's the purpose and vision of this group? Um, Eric, I apologize. I'm going to undo this. So that I can have the other document too, okay. but I can make this one bigger. 
Which if you're using the Drexler Sibit team model, and I'll Google that really quickly, like stage one is, is the why. Um, yeah. So all the questions in this document to me have gone um, much, much further along in the mm -hmm. team development model. Yep, I agree. Process and so a, a question I've got is, um, so let me let me try to fill this in a little bit more. What should, what we should work on? Maybe I don't. I'm not crazy about this header, but um, mm -hmm. why are we working together? Well, I, I think for other people who aren't in this group, like it would help them to notice know like the reason why you know why this mm -hmm. group exists yep, <laughs> and what I it totally is that agree. our vision is to do as a group together to assist the larger whole yeah and also it will create clarity on what we're trying to resolve like exactly uh, exactly because yeah. um it, it's um so this is this is essentially what would be in um a constitution for what it's worth yeah or a vision statement or a purpose statement. Yeah. Yep, agreed. Um, uh, come back to this a little bit. The there's a I'm big on um, I'm big on decentralization and federation. Um, so in my view of my architectural view uh, is that a group like this should not be um, a subgroup of the meta project. It should be its own sovereign thing. It should be its own individual autonomous thing. And it should help other parts of people who are working on the meta project. But it's not a part of Meta Project. It's just working with Meta Project, and it might end up working with other other things too that aren't even Meta Project. So I think we could have a long discussion about that and and whether or not that makes sense. Um, uh, there's some other things like how do we how do we meet together? Um, so I'm. So maybe that's another thing is is uh, who you know who wants to be on this who wants to work on this. Uh, you know the the early raising our hands uh, this this past week kind of expressed interest, but once we unfold a little bit more, why you know why are we working together? What are we working on? How are we going to work together? Some people might want to join us. Some people might want to leave. Um, and then who, who is in the room, I think, uh, will kind of, uh, I'm trying to type and talk, how should we meet, uh, meet, coordinate and work, meet, communicate and work. Um, Jordan is fairly far along with the idea that um, the Meta Project needs an integrated delivery system. Let me uh, let me bring up his message. So this is in the process and program management channel, um, and he's fairly far along the the why and and some of the how. But it's it's like this is the stuff that uh, a team that is much more fully formed than than we are now, and I think that we will be for a long time. Um, you know, uh, 
I don't know. All this stuff makes sense to me, but it's it's fairly technical. Um, and defining any of this is something that's going to be challenging, I think, for a group that's just getting together. So we, I, I feel like we've got kind of a, you know, we've we've got big eyes and a lot of like dream for the future. Um, the, you know, the the group of people assembled uh, last week on Wednesday said, oh, wow, somebody's in charge of process and program management. They'll tell us exactly what we need to do. And, you know, it's that's that's it's going to be hard even communicating that that's not where we can start. I think. Can I? So, yeah. Can I yeah. Uh, talk, say a bit about that? Like, um, in the NGO world, what happened in 80s, 90s, I think, is that it was specialists coming in. Uh, they were like the, the experts yeah. coming in yeah. and doing the program. Yeah. Uh, Meaning yep. they went into a country and they said, this is the solution for your problems, for your poverty, for your social problems. And they were defining for others what they had to do. And they had this clear project. They saw their, they saw what needed to happen. And then they created projects out of that, which they decided on what would happen. Uh, yep. And it didn't work. It didn't really create the social change that they wanted. And then gradually, bit by bit, uh, it became the idea of, yeah, we, we need all the actors involved and we need to work from the ground up. We need to work from the grassroots, meaning talking with the people that live out there and have them gradually take responsibility. Yep. And another part of it is instead of uh, giving them the fish is learning them, teaching them how to fi fish. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's kind of also part of that uh, paradigm shift is going from oh, here we are the experts and we know what's good for you to really starting to get people empowered and uh, owning and being in the center of uh, making things happen for their own community. I love that. It's, I think there's also a deep humbling in that too, and that the experts aren't the ones that have the local on the ground knowledge, and that that learning has to go like both in both directions. I, yes, and I have a counterpoint to that, which is <laughs> there's just a good way to do project management, and there's good tools to use, and you can't start with that. But at some point, pretty quickly, you want people to say, OK, so I get it. I need an issue tracker. What, how, how should I track my issues? And you could let them discover that for themselves over the course of you know, a year or two years or five years or 10 years. Or you can just kind of tell them, here's the two or three top answers. This is the, probably the one that you should start with. Right. So it, it feels like a good role for this group it could be like as an ongoing resource consulting, you know, yep. I mean, we can, we can provide upfront training, but we can also provide, you know, mentoring or um, assistance as people come up with questions. Yep. So, yeah. And I mean, every ideal or, uh, counter answer is often a swing from one to the other like oh now it's only experts oh now it's only uh <laughs> yeah the the the, yeah. the green uh, the the people uh, that we need to listen to and we're only in service yeah. of it, there's a balance between the two i would say and uh, an interplay yeah. yep And it's also about working with polarizations. Uh, I missed that until now in the in the groups in the group talks. That's it is part of social dimensions, but it's kind of necessary to bring it in now. It seems like working with polarities brings up all the issues that people have and really shows. Okay, there's a person over here and there's a person over here, and helps them really listen to each other and that also would be part of what we do is 
um, I, Pete might really have a very deep understanding why something works for somebody else. That's one polarity. And there's there might be another person that says, wait a moment, you come here barging in with your issues without even having listened one word to me. Who are you to say this? You're a typical white male. <laughs> you know? So yep. there's that would be a polarity, for instance. And then it, there's something also about working with those polarities. It's, it's part of the social dimensions group, but somehow it also seems to fit in program management. And um, it, it could be something like, when does somebody go to a group to talk about it? When do you need mediation? When do you need people being talked to and giving space because they have a conflict with each other? might be part also of, of, of us and how we do that. Um, like an open loop could also be, oh, somebody has an issue with something. And in, in the beginning of a group, often it's normal to harmonize, to want to be on the same page, but at certain moments, conflicts will arise. And it's good to be proactive in looking at what the polarities might be. It's a, it's a weird moment to put it in, but somehow it makes sense feeling wise. Yeah. Makes, makes a ton of sense. I, I like it. It it also r reminds me that it would be great to work more on defining the interfaces and boundaries between PPM and social dimensions. Yeah. It may be that we're overweight in one way already. Um, so maybe PPM is just ongoing resource consulting. Um, for you know tools or something like that and that's ppm and then social dimensions handles a bunch of other stuff you know more more stuff okay like polarities and polarizations helen i want to check in with you how are you doing right now oh i'm doing okay yeah i am i'm totally grateful because it's creating an understanding in me in a way and what you also said eric in many in many and also pete is is that um is to creating, I, I often, when I work with groups, I'm planting seeds with questions and I don't want an answer, kind of an awakening awareness in people. And to do what I'm doing, I'm working a lot of Sami organization as a spokesperson. And that is not so easy because we are an indigenous people that is not um, recognized by our country. So it's a lot of many, many emotions in the groups and you have to go like a in a very thin line and but for me it's it's this to be here is that i think in a way it's very important to have the earth dialogue with us today um and i think we are different people who has like you eric said we have different channels but of course for me it's kind of when I'm sitting in this room, not, this, not in this group, because this is kind of among of what I think it's, mm -hmm. uh, I can get in. But when I'm sitting in the larger group, it's too much information in the same time. So I have very hard to digest because I have other information coming to me. So, the yeah. So this is concept is, is really, and sometimes when I, I signed up, I signed up for some groups and, and then I was thinking, um, okay, I will, I will see and I will feel, um, and because I really want to contribute and and I believe in, like I said, when I had discussions with Jordan, how I work, I think that that uh, it is, um, yeah, I'm one voice from 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 my part of the country, and. But I think that um, it's for me, it's also really important to, to work globally, which I do with in other different organizations by bringing in the art dialogue in. Mm -hmm. um, so it's funny, like the, I hear you on different levels at the same time and feeling wise, it's hard to tune into which one is essential right now. Um, so please feel welcome and um, bring in yourself. It will help me to know where you really are. 
and uh, if you feel st stupid or whatever you said before um inform us with your <laughs> what is there because it will help me yeah yeah because a lot of it is about bridging and about creating clarity and about yeah. speaking in a clear way and it, and um uh and it's i understand it's a, it's a funny position for you to be in uh, the way where you are uh in in the role that you have it's like a it like rationally it might not make sense and that, that's an uncomfortable place to be in i imagine yeah and i can because i <clears throat> before i work in very heavy psychiatry with the investigation and treatment in in, in mm -hmm. and i burned out and uh, I was so devastated and and then I have this gift from my family that I didn't want because it was kind of a, not I, uh... a knowledge knowledge in my family but in a way after five years of hard depression I I I mean I I have paid my students I my, all my teachings I so I integrated in who I am and and do the work as a wisdom keeper. And yes, you are totally right, Eric. It's not right. It's not easy, but it's kind of, um, for me, I have the belief that we can build a bridge between Mother Earth and the modern technology or modern world. Many people in my community, they don't agree with me because they, want, they think that we can put away all the new things that is coming. I don't believe in that because there are another generation coming now. And I think we can learn from the history, but we also need to accept the fact where we are today and look for possibilities and see how can we walk the walk together. So yes, but I feel very comfort with you and I'm very grateful for how it explains because it's getting very clear and you Julia and you also Eric so it's kind of uh, but I will be honest I really have a little bit difficulty to find my role in the group mm -hmm. that is how it is yeah I understand that and um, it might be that it's another group that's one possibility that you belong in it might mm. also be that it needs more time to get clarity on mm. what exactly your role mm. is so both possibilities yeah um and somehow i wouldn't like you to feel tension with where you are at with being in this group so it's uh... but you know i've been in different calls i learned more i i realized much more in these calls than ever of the other calls i've been to yeah, and well, that is that is so that is so amazing yeah, and just for, for, from my perspective, I know a lot about a lot of things, and it's also way too much information for me in the big group. So <laughs> that's my. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and Helene, I want to say that um, in that Drexler Civet model, that very first stage is like why, and 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 it's also who am I? Who am I with these people? You know. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's like, I still feel in the big group, I'm at stage one. I don't, I have no idea what the meta project is really. Like nobody's really explained it to me. I haven't had a good <laughs> sound grounding in that. So I'm still like, what is happening here? You know, but yeah. But here I feel like I'm getting a sense of where I can, where I can better contribute. And also one of the principles in the art of hosting when we do um, open space technology is the law of two feet, which means if you're not in the right place, you have full permission, you know, to, to relocate yourself at any moment to, you know, where it feels more relevant and better for you. Um, it makes me think also of... Um... Is, is it again social dimensions of, or not? I'm, I'm sorry about that one, but um, I think it's nice to together look at spiral dynamics a bit. I don't particularly like the model that much, as in um, as, as as the issues it creates. Like I have a love hate relationship with spiral dynamics, but I also think it makes sense into what we're bumping into a lot, um, because if you ask the question, what is the meta project? Um, 
that is one of the issues with the meta project is that you can't pinpoint it easily because it is meta and it brings like it first takes this like very very mm -hmm. divergent look and sees that all of it is there and tries to puzzle and weave it together somehow and it's a really difficult process um and it creates a lot of strain on people i would say um for me it's been very tiring to be in the group um because i don't know who's carrying what who has which capacity uh what needs to be held or not it it's it's a very fuzzy chaotic dynamic somehow in my mind at least i don't know how it's for others and then um but it's if 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 you if you look at the meta project from a spiral dynamics perspective it's like okay uh, in in green meme, for instance, it's people that count, and then in a higher level, it's um, processes between people are more the systemic that counts, and then another level, it's more like the energetic interplay between people that counts, and it they all matter, and everybody's got their own viewpoint on it. Some people will be really not open to the spiritual dimensions, and others will be very much saying that that's the most important, I would say. And putting those perspectives together will allow us to see each other and to see the different places we're in. I don't like it because it's, what I don't like about it that it's the levels and that one level is higher up in the chain because I think it's often the other way around. Um, or it creates kind of a implicit hierarchy, but it might help us also clarify stuff. What does that mean for this group? Because we want a very practical, pragmatic group kind of here as well, I would say, um, is we're also trying to make people work effectively with a lot of information, um, being able to process it, see what their, what their role is to be effective at what they're doing. Um, so it kind of also ties into uh, digesting the multitude of information is also kind of our part. It's also map weavers that's doing that. Um, so I think somehow part of our process is dealing with that multitude of information and those, all those different levels that come through and how do we spread them out? Who needs to know what to be able to do their job? Who needs to be in contact with whom? Who needs to be in which group and connected to which group to be able to do this well? Um, that might also be part of what we're doing. Uh, I like that a lot, um, Eric. And and my suggestion would actually be make that a, a separate group. Hmm. Um, so there there would be it would be awesome to have a kind of like a traffic control um, hmm. group. And then Management. I would I would imagine you know the process and program management and resource you know built capabilities and stuff like that which isn't actually the coordination. It could help the coordination, but it's not the coordination. It's just, you know, how do you work? Yeah, and another really important term there is growth. Like, um, how do we deal with being a small group and getting gradually bigger and who needs to be informed at which place when? And that's partly also program management, part of that new group as well, that you say that separate group, but part of this group as well. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. I need to go eat lunch. Oh, yeah, it is ten past already. Um, do do the I, best I agree of you want to keep going? Or? That's one answer for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it's it. a de facto. Well, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Eric. And and then we, if if something pops up that's better along the way, then that's great. But for the moment, this is good. For I have me. a longer longer discussion about google docs and google drive versus massive wiki but yeah as yeah. you would imagine yeah but that's also a process and it will gradually open up i guess yeah. Yeah. um any last comments one minute comment 30 second comment is maybe better in order to I wish, we had, really really huh? and, and I wish we had set smart goals at the beginning of the meeting and and I wish we had set smart goals at the beginning of the meeting and yeah okay <laughs> and uh had a retro at the end of the meeting but I don't think we knew enough to set smart goals at the beginning of the meeting personally 
but and I've really well, kind of I for for me I I I think if we had worked a little bit on smart goals the the smart goals might have been get to know each other. Yeah. Right. We did we did I the the especially the four of us I think we worked well together as a, a group mind exploring the space well. So yeah. we did a good job. Um Yeah. But, yeah, I agree. I and for me, it was um, a really useful call in terms of just feeling through this person, this group dynamic, and and um, getting more of a sense of what this specific group wants to be about. Um, how are you, Ellen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am. And now I'm really. I'm grateful for this call because uh, I finally understanding some things and I'm that is also very important because I want to understand but I have to say to all of you you are very good of describing and and Pete you're doing an amazing work <laughs> I, I'm really uh, um, and that's also when you're writing is is good because then I see and 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 it's going in a memorize in another way, but uh, this meeting gave me much more than ever meeting with the with the meta project. So I'm very grateful. Thank and you. That's working. Yeah. Working. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you were great um, facilitating kind of handoffs and making uh making deeper explanations of things thank you but i also really um you have a way to making explaining things sim simple and complete which i appreciate uh, you um yeah you're really concise um well not always short but <laughs> but, but it, it's helpful because it really lays the ground and it, it's helpful yeah. for us to meet each other I think you weaving very good you Eric and Pete together mm. and, and also very interesting what you said you about the, the five work you were yeah. talking I, so I, um, I'm really appreciating hearing from both you um, Pete and Eric because you've you are much more deeply embedded into this work. So it's giving me a bigger picture of like, you know, what's happening here has been really useful. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. We still need that start, start page. But it, there's also no, nothing like talking to people who yeah, and, know the um, landscape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But this talking will help to make that clear as well, I would say. And, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I, I like how my energy shifts in this meeting. Like I am much more calm and present and it's a much easier flow of information. I also appreciate Julie step, making a step back and taking time to really look at the why, because I also have this push forward, like, oh, let's just do things and get things done. Mm -hmm. It actually helps to, to get connection to what we're doing first. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we'll meet again next week. Maybe I, I don't think at the same time. I, I would really like to get everybody together somehow. Mm -hmm. More than separate groups. But mm -hmm. so we'll Our, catch up and chat. And who's able to be on the call? Is it tomorrow night? Tomorrow, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I may there. be I may be able to be there. I don't know yet. I will not because in the it's in the night for me. Yeah, it's in the night for you. Get some sleep. Yeah. 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 We're gonna need a synthesis somehow to do synthesis between the two meetings too, which Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I I, I kind of think well, I hope we can get more people together all at the same time. When Marianne did something really cool, which was she was right on top of, you know, setting this up and getting it going, but it's it's also there's a there's a, a weekly rhythm, you know, it's nice to be able to report progress on the next Wednesday meeting, right? 
And mm -hmm. so I'm sure Jordan in his heart of hearts would go, oh, it'd be so cool if process and program management were like up and running and, you know, could report on, on Wednesday that, okay, we've got everything organized, let's go. And mm -hmm. that's not gonna happen, but. Which I think is fine because like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it takes a minute for, you know, something to start gelling together. Yeah. It takes, and, it, it takes as long as it takes. And, yeah. and my, my experience until now in groups like this, working on things like this, is it's always taking more time than you imagine. Yeah. Mm. One of my favorite teachers right now, Bayo Akamalafe, says, times are urgent, we must slow down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. Exactly. Especially if we want to be fully human. That's a, a, a wonderful thought. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to lunch. Have a good lunch. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thanks each of you. <laughs> it was a great call. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for a great call. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.